Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christina, and in this week's video, I'm super excited to share five easy DIY projects with you. Plus, I've done a really fun collaboration with one of my favorite YouTube creators and furniture artists, Kasha Furniture. What we've done is we've sent a mystery package to one another. What we're gonna do is a furniture makeover only using the supplies that we sent. So let's head over to project one. Let's check out the sender box. I was blown away with what Kasha had sent in her mystery box. I had so many amazing supplies. There's no way I could just make one furniture piece or one DIY with all of these amazing redesigned by Prima products. Hello, Christina. I'm so excited about this challenge and thank you for doing it with me. I can't wait to see your project at the end of the video. Uh, for this challenge, I would love to see you use uh, some gold gilding wax that I sent you in the box. Uh, I would love to see you use a dry brushing technique uh, with three colors that I picked for you and those are rod mill, Athenian black and old white. Have fun and I can't wait to see it. For this challenge, I'll be using the Rod Mill Purple, a dark Athenian black, and some old white chalk paint. I found this dresser on Facebook Marketplace for $60. It's a really good deal. It's got a few dings and knocks to it, but I think with a nice old world finish, I think we could do something kind of fun with it. So this will be a fun challenge. I'm going to give this piece a really dermal cleaning with the TSP to remove any grease or film onto the furniture. This way when I go to apply the paint it'll go on a little bit smoother and easier. So I want to try the redesigned by Prima Decoupage Decor Tissue Paper. And it actually has a lot of purple plus some other colors that I think would work really well with the color palette that Kesha chose for this challenge. So I've washed down the dresser and I'm ready to apply the paint, but first thing I'm going to do is use some old white. This way I can camouflage underneath the decoupage paper before I apply it. So this way we can get good clear clarity on that decoupage and we can continue to paint with the other colors. So this is just a buffer to get started. For any decoupage, to have a light surface undertone really helps to amplify the colors and make it sharper and clearer. I'm going to be using the Mod Podge as my glue adhesive as well as some cling wrap so that way I can help smooth any creases and wrinkles as I apply the decoupage. One thing I noted is this decoupage looks really, really cool even in reverse. So I'm actually thinking of doing something a little bit different with this decoupage. And the other thing I've noticed with this redesigned by Prima decoupage paper, it actually has like a fabric-like feel for something so thin, which makes it super easy to work with. Most decoupage papers I work with are very, very thin and sometimes can be a little tricky to manipulate when you're working with it, especially on a vertical angle. But with this having a little bit more of a fiber of fabric to it, I found this super easy to work with and really enjoyed it. So what I'm going to be doing is cutting it where the drawers are and also where the frame is. So this took a few minutes, but with a little bit of patience and an X-Acto knife, it went along pretty smoothly. To rub down the decoupage paper, I find it really easy just to use the cling wrap because it's got that little bit of a plastic smooth feeling to it. This way I can rub as quickly as I want and really move out any air bubbles or creases that are currently on it or are trying to form on the decoupage. I will be folding a small, maybe one to two centimeters of the decoupage on the drawers themselves. But the other way that you can do that is actually just using sandpaper, just to lightly scuff the edge of your decoupage to get a nice sharp edge as you keep applying it. Since I just did really, really fine cuts, I just added a little bit of the Mod Podge to the edge and then I would use the Saran Wrap. This way I could just rub it around the edges. I decided to go with a more abstract feeling with this decoupage because of the colors. So I actually flipped 
the bottom half upside down. And because it had so many cool effects going on with the colors and that little bit of white and more of the purple, this way I didn't have to cut it off. So I'm gonna go with that little bit more abstract by flipping it upside down and then I'm gonna incorporate more paint. This way I can make it more cohesive. And again, you can just use a fine grit sandpaper if you just want to sand off the edges of your decoupage paper. I always recommend to seal the decoupage paper with whatever adhesive medium you're using, especially before you go and apply more paints on it so this way you don't lift the decoupage paper. So going back to the color challenge, I'm going to go and paint the sides as well as the top just using the rod mill. Athenian black and a little bit of old white. But just for the sides, I'm going to stick with the black and the purple, and I'm just going to stipple in the colors, and I'm just going to go with this kind of vintage old kind of character look. All I'm using is the tips of the bristles of the brush, and I'm just lightly dabbing, almost in a stabbing style, the paints as they kind of collide together and this way I can bring up the color and I can bring it down creating highlights and lowlights. But right now I'm just going to concentrate on getting a base on most of the dresser and I'm going to stick to most of the black for the top. And then around the edge of the dresser top I'll probably again just go and stipple in a little bit more of the rod mill. I haven't decided. I'll figure it out as I go. I generally will use my first coat as a area of where I'm deciding where I want the paints and then I kind of go back and fine tune it as I get more into it. So I decided to break out some of the acrylic paints so this way I could use some of the colors that were currently on that decoupage and just lightly feather in some of the colors this way I could mask out the fact that you have a paper on the dresser and make it feel a lot more like a painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna feather in some of these colors and I'm gonna kind of start to overlap them a little bit. There's absolutely no right and wrong with this. You're just taking some of these color tones and you're just masking it into. What I'll do is I'll bring the rod mill down and then I'll keep painting over that rod mill with a few of these hinted acrylic colors to blend in the decoupage to the rod mill color. It's good sometimes just to play around with a smaller paintbrush and use a bunch of different colors and this way you can kind of overlap them and play with them and even stipple with your brush a bit. You can completely mix up your paints. It's never really an issue when it comes to just going with a creative side. Adding a little bit here, a little bit there has never been a problem. You're gonna be sealing this all again with either a lacquer or a clear wax. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of some acrylic paints that you can even get at a dollar store. So I'm using some sienna, I'm using a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, and I'm gonna just keep feathering it. And then when I wanna create a little bit more texture, I'll use that stippling motion again and just lightly use the tips of my brush and just kinda of add in the highlights and lowlights of that old white and Athenian black. To create that little bit of an abstract effect, you really only need a tiny, tiny amount of paint. This is a fantastic way to exercise your use of colors and overlapping. And whatever you don't like or whatever you want to change, you can just grab a little bit of that base color, go right over top and start over again. I did want to wrap in a little bit more of the rod mill towards the decoupage paper. And then as I saw, I kind of wanted the paint to be very sporadic. I didn't want it to have a clean line. So I just kept bringing the rod mill over and then bringing the acrylic colors back over the rod mill. And this kind of built up a really nice texture and made it feel a little bit more authentic, kind of like a painting was done completely and there wasn't actually a decoupage to begin with. It's a lot of fun to play with different colors and try different styles and recreate different types of look for furniture pieces. So this is just another way of kind of reinventing a whole new look and creating a lot of depth and colorful animation. 
This decoupage had a lot of the blues and the greens and even a little bit of the yellows and reds. And when I flipped the bottom half upside down, I was able to kind of carry that through and again, keep filtering in a little bit of the rod mill as well as some more old white. And again, it was just a challenge and it was fun to do and I'm kind of glad that I did the flip and I love the reflection look that it gave instead of it just being almost just a full concentrated painting. It gave it an abstract feeling. When you use the paint only in very tiny, tiny amounts, you'll have so much more control on where you want the paint. So if it's a little too yellow or if it's a little too purple, you can grab a little tiny bit at the corner of the bristles of your brush and just lightly dab it in. And I like to move the actual bristles of the brush in random. The more random you can be, the more abstract and the more your colors are going to kind of collide together. The more depth and dimension you want to create with your different colors, the more you want to move your brush around and that's going to create those highlights and lowlights. I love the fact that we had a lot of white in the bottom of this decoupage. So by flipping it upside down, this allowed me to carry it through. And again, I'm gonna keep taking it all the way to the bottom skirt of the dresser, all the way around to the side frames. And again, you only need a little tiny, tiny bit. And don't be shy to grab a little bit of the white, a little bit of the green, a little bit of whatever your heart is telling you, just go with it. You can't really go wrong because if you don't like something, it's only paint. You can go back and you can correct it by adding more of the darker colors or adding more of the lighter colors. I wanted to bring a little bit of that stippling I was doing with the original colors, the rod mill and Athenian black up into the decoupage a little bit and this kind of camouflaged the look of a decoupage paper onto the dresser. So again, it's just the art of illusion. And since I would go around with the other colors, I would just very, very lightly just grab those extra color tones in that decoupage and just try to bring them over, then bring over the rod mill purple and a little bit of the black. And again, it's just the art of masking. Once I completed the front with the additional acrylic colors, I went back to the sides and the top to go ahead and do a second coat, doing the same thing I did with the first coat. And again, I'm just playing around with the highlights and lowlights of both of the color tones until I liked it. So it really was just play and go and until you were happy with the way the color flow went. Once everything will be completely dry, then I can go around and add in a bit of my extra, which will be the gold vintage gilding wax. And this is so beautiful. First thing I did was actually paint up the hardware with it, but I did leave it overnight to dry before I applied them back to the dresser. I've always enjoyed how Kesha Furniture have always put these beautiful gold accents and for whatever reason, I don't really use gold very often, but I'm really falling in love with its accent look and how much more of a bit of a glam you can use to your furniture. And it still has a beautiful classic look to it. Gilding wax is very easy to apply. You can use the brush or you can use the tip of your finger and a little bit goes a long way. I even decided to go around to the edges and corners and keep playing a little bit more with this gold. As I say, I just wanted to really see what I could do with the gold. As I say, I don't normally use a lot of gold or even gilding wax on furniture pieces, but it really enhances it beautifully. Once everything was completely dry, I'm going to go ahead and use the furniture clear wax to go ahead and protect the paint. It also enriches the color, so I have a lot of texture on here, so I'm going to use a small brush. That way I can get into the texture with the clear wax, and then I can go ahead and start to use maybe even a little bit of the dark or the black wax. This is a great way to add a little bit more dimension and character and even a little bit more of an old world finish. 
So whatever you use with a dark or a black wax, since you have that clear wax as your undercoat, you don't like it or you have a little too much, you can always take it back with adding a little bit more of the clear wax. It will act as an eraser. It's a great finish and it adds beautiful dimension to any of your furniture pieces. never touch gold and it's a super f I absolutely love it now so I see myself incorporating more gold so are you gonna show me your piece first sorry? I'm gonna show you my piece so I actually have two but this is my main one. Oh my god that is I wasn't expecting that wow it's gorgeous it is so pretty. I had no idea because you put the sneak peek just at the corner, so I had no idea what have you done. I thought you layered, but you really put the decoupage. That is so gorgeous. I would so so pretty. Love it. Precious, please. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Like I'm like you now. Like I have to show you from the right angle. Exactly. <laughs> it's all about the light. Yeah. Holy cow. Oh my god, look at that. It's gorgeous. <laughs> nice. A beginner friendly technique mm -hmm. for people who want to try something more than just basic, like, you know, painting. So, definitely fun. I'm yeah. glad I did it. I'll be doing more rugging. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> well, I'm definitely going to be using a lot more gold. <laughs> <laughs> I was gifted this gorgeous hat from Kasha Furniture and I really thought this might be a great idea to try onto a jean jacket. So I'm going to show you the process of how easy it is to use the redesigned by Prima decor transfers and you can do this onto fabrics. She had added these decor transfers in the Fuchsia Sunset in the mystery box and there are so many surfaces you can actually apply these transfers to. So I'm going to cut out a couple of the images as there's so many on here you don't have to use the whole thing for one project. It's fantastic that you can actually just cut up pieces of what you like and you can add a little bit here or a little bit there. So I'm going to basically cut out the sizes that I need to go in between the seams of the back of the jacket. Once you've aligned everything the way you want it, then you can go ahead and remove the backing. Just kind of like a sticker, you're almost just going to remove the back end of it. Then you're going to place it onto the fabric. Now one thing I noticed, I tried to do this when I first started, is you really need to have an ultra flat surface. So I ended up actually using a book as the tabletop that I'm working on here has a little bit of a ridge to it. So putting the book down really made a big difference. So that way the transfer could actually adhere to the material nice and smoothly. With so many designs that you can choose from, from the redesign by Prima, it's really endless all the things that you can create with some of these products. To apply it to a fabric though, I did notice that it was a little bit easier just to go into small sections. So because you do, and there is a lot of detail on these transfers. So just going really slowly, just keep rubbing it and just pull the backing very, very slowly. Make sure that the transfer has adhered to the material. I was so inspired when I saw a reel that Kesha had posted um, applying these to the hats and the fact that she had sent one to me was a complete inspiration to try this on the back of a jacket. But the ideas can be endless. You could do this to table runners, you could do this to frames, all kinds of home decor. So it's not just for the furniture. There's so many fun DIYs and so many transfer options. 
Now when a transfer does have a lot of detail, just like these, again, you just really want to be patient with it. If you start to lift it off and you can see that the transfer is not fully adhered, just apply it back down and just keep rubbing it. It does come off and once it's completely off, it adheres beautifully. For clothing and washing, I just recommend a cold cycle and lay flat to dry. So both my husband Ryan and I have been drinking these ciders and they are so good, but I wanted to actually upcycle these bottles. They're actually kind of funky, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to actually wash off labels and clean out the bottles. Sometimes the labels are actually glued all over and sometimes it's just around the rim of the label. It's always best just to soak it in really hot soapy water and then just for a little tip you can always just use a little bit of some nail polish remover to remove the excess of the glue that's stuck onto the bottle. Most of the time soap and water will generally just take it off but if you just need that little extra helping hand I did find that using the nail polish remover really just took off any of the excess sticky residual. It all just depends on the type of glue that the label was used with but as I say soap and water should do the trick and you have a little tip if you need a little extra help. So I'm going to try the decor stamps on the glass and see how that works since there's actually two full sheets in this transfer that it was sent and there's so many gorgeous designs on here. This really makes for beautiful easy decor and you get to upcycle as well which is always one of my favorites. So you could use this for even as a candle holder, you could use this for a table setting placement and there's so many beautiful colors and choices to choose from. So you can just cut out the specific of the decor that you want to use on your recycled bottle and you're just going to rub it on just similar like we did with the material. And I found that it actually went on a lot faster when you worked on a hard surface like the glass and I'm sure the same is going to be very similar to wood. The nice thing about these transfers is they're ultra smooth so even up against the glass or even the material that I used, you don't really actually even really feel it. They do provide the little wood handle so that way you're able just to rub anything so just make sure you always save it if you're going to be reusing the decor transfers. And this little DIY idea is perfect if you want to just have some flower stems or some dry twigs and you just want to create an extra decor to your table settings or even your desks and you just want to keep it simplified and you kind of homemade it and recycled. And there's so many wonderful things that you can find at thrift shops and vintage stores as well as even the Goodwills that have different table setting from plates to other jars, other types of bottles. So depending on what you're looking for, this is a great way to add a little bit more of an embellishment. Since I'm going to use this for flowers or flower stems, I think I'm just going to remove the little red cork stopper and I'm going to go and actually make two of these since I have so many of the beautiful designs. And this way I can mix and match, I can add a color contrast or I can pair the colors with the other flowers or even if you want to use the fake flowers into them. You could even paint the bottle and then add the transfer. small chest of drawers on the Facebook marketplace and I paid $80 for this. 
Now it's a little bit in rough condition. You could sand it down, but I think for what I'd like to create for my husband's office makeover, I think I'm just gonna go and clean it with the TSP and we're going to use the Annie Salone chalk paint. And I'm actually wanting to do a little bit of the dry brushing technique. I wanted to challenge myself as well as still remain with some of the colors as well as the techniques that Kesha had mentioned with the dry brushing and I'm only going to be using the Athenian Black and some Old White. The Athenian Black is a true jet black and I only really going to need maybe one and a half coats to get a really good coverage. I'll use a little spritz of water here and there, and this is actually gonna help smooth out those brush strokes. And it's very advantageous to make sure to use a small amount of paint at a time. This mystery box challenge I've done with Kesha has actually been really fun and I have to admit I've really fallen in love with that vintage gold. I know she loves using gold and I've actually kind of been envious so I'm really glad I've had a chance to use it. So I want to be careful not to paint over the hardware of this particular piece as I want to add the embellishments of that vintage gold that she gave me in the mystery package. There's something about black and gold that has a very regal and very refined look to it. So I put on about one and a half coats and I'm gonna make sure that this is completely dry before I get into my next step. Now, because I'm actually making this for my husband's office, he actually works for a global pharmaceutical company. So I found this vintage decoupage uh, image that actually had the New York Pharmaceutical Association on it. So we're gonna decoupage this onto the top. So I'm gonna grab myself some cling wrap and I'm gonna use some of that Mod Podge again. And I usually always use a disposable sponge applicator to apply that decoupage. And I'm gonna do it in small sections because this is actually a very, very thin paper. And this will allow me to rub that paper onto the decoupage to eliminate those creases and folds. Working in the small sections too will also help that your decoupage won't stick to your decoupage medium, whether you're using a decoupage medium or a Mod Podge. Because the paper's so thin and if it grabs onto something that's moist and sticky, it's really hard to kind of manipulate it to get it nice and smooth. So working in those small sections really helps. Once I put down that Mod Podge, I would just grab almost the center of the decoupage and start to rub from within the center. This really helped me to actually rub out the original folds that are on the decoupage as well. When you are working with a thin tissue a decoupage, you do have to be very careful. That's why I like to use the saran wrap. It is so easy to tear it once the paper has that little bit of decoupage medium what will happen is the paper becomes moist so when i've used my hands nine times out of ten i end up tearing it whereas when i use the saran wrap it seems to prevent that but if your decoupage has too many almost wrinkles into it don't be afraid to slowly lift it up and then reapply it back down once I've done everything, I'm actually gonna grab a little piece of sandpaper and I'm going to just kind of shave off the ends right where there's a bit of a curve at the front there. And just make sure you're going at that 45 degree angle and the residual decoupage paper should come right off nice and clean. Working out the creases in the decoupage just takes a little bit of patience. As soon as I was happy with the decoupage, I went ahead and I just used the Mod Podge directly on top before I continued to paint. The Mod Podge will dry very quickly, so give it about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then you can carry on. Because I'm gonna be painting a little bit over the decoupage, I wanna make sure it's nice and sealed on. I decided actually to add in a little tiny bit of the French linen as well as I'll be using the Old White. But for dry brushing, you're just you're gonna use a paper towel or an old lint-free cloth, and you're just going to lightly, lightly hint the tips of your brush with a little tiny bit of paint. 
and all you're going to be doing is sweeping it and that little tiny bit of paint will actually grab and especially when you're using contrast colors like a black and a light linen or a white color you'll actually just be dusting on the paint and it's just going to grab the high points of the original black that's on here if you're new to dry brushing, don't be nervous with it because if you have a little too much paint on your dry brush, you can always go back and grab your original base color, in my case would be the black, and just go over it, let it dry, and start over again. I really wanted to achieve a old, very vintage, very nostalgic look for this piece, and the dry brushing is going to give it that old world aged kind of look to it. So that's the beauty with the dry brushing. And it also allows you to play with the paints and the paint hues. So it's a beautiful technique. It's very soft and it's really easy to work. It's just a little bit of practice. Now because I want to create the kind of vintage and aged nostalgic look, I'm going to stick to the edges and corners and where the handles would actually be sitting and I'm just going to go around and keep playing with it for a little while and again if I've added a little too much or a little too much paint whereas I wanted it to have more of a dried brush look to it I'll just grab a little bit of that black paint go over it again and make my correction once it's dried. To work in the top and the decoupage it's actually quite a contrast between the black and the decoupage colors. So I'm going to use the old white, the French linen, and I'm actually going to do a lot of stippling to create a little ridge of texture. And I'm going to do kind of a back and forth. So I'm going to be adding the lighter tones, stippling it through, then I'm going to go back and stipple on the black. And this is just going to help kind of mask that paper edge that I have with the decoupage. I find when I want to go with these kind of looks, I find layers are always the best, especially when I'm doing that stippling. Then, as soon as I'm done with all of the stippling, I'm going to go back and do a little bit more dry brushing to the top, so that way it has this kind of continuity with the body of what I've done. So again, for the top, I'm going to be stippling a little bit of the old white chalk paint, a little bit of the French linen chalk paint, and then I'll keep coming back and forth with a little bit of that Athenium Black. Now to give it even a little bit more age, I decided to add just a little tiny bit of dry brush with that on fleur in and around where the handles were and around the bottom where the legs are. That on fleur color is a nice rich, almost chocolate black. So I'm just going to kind of even run a little tiny, tiny bit on the top. And again, I'm just playing around with it, seeing what textures I like. And again, if I've done something and I don't like it, I just run back to that base color of Athenium Black, add it back in, and it wipes out anything that I didn't like that I tried. The nice part about the dry brushing as well is you can start with a little bit, kind of stand back, take a look, and I've actually gone back and decided to add even a little bit more around my edges and corners of this small chest of drawers. And again, like I mentioned, I've added a little too much, so I'm just going to lightly feather on a little bit more of that Athenian black and just kind of run it through and just take back a little bit of the dry brushing. And again, really excited to try that vintage gold. I'm going to go around to all the edges and corners of this piece, including the keyhole, and I'm even going to do the handles with the gold. And when you're playing around with the gilding wax for the first time, you only need a tiny, tiny bit. It goes a long way, and you can just use your fingertips or you could use a small little artist brush. If you've tried it and you feel you don't care for how much you've put on, you can always grab a little bit of clear wax and it will wipe back the amount of the gilding wax so it acts as a corrector for you. The dry brushing technique is a fantastic way to incorporate whether you're going to use neutral colors or if you'd like to add some fun colors, but you want to do it very softly. And again, if you've added a little too much, just go back to your base color and just feather that back in. So there's a lot of forgiveness.
That mystery box was endless, filled with goodies. So they have these decor stamps. These stamps can be used separately, and all you're gonna do when you open it up is you're actually just gonna use a fine grit sandpaper and just lightly scuff the top of your stamp. Then I'm gonna use that old white chalk paint, and I'm just gonna roll it on very lightly because I want a weathered look with my stamps. If you want a nice clean stamp, you're just gonna actually add in a nice even coat of the chalk paint or whatever paint you'd like to use for your stamps. But because I want it to have kind of a weathered look, I don't want the paint to be too even. And it's because I'm going for that old world kind of a vintage look. So I want the stamps to kind of look a little bit worn out. So just be a little more less sparing, excuse me, with your paint. And if you want a nice clean stamp, just make sure your paint has gone on the roller and rolled on nice and even. I'm definitely looking forward to using more of these stamps in some upcoming DIYs as there's so many fun things that you can do. Once I'm done everything, I'm going to clear wax it only. I'm not going to use anything else just to seal the project. this one single chair that I upcycled uh, a while back, probably about two years ago. And I, I love it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just very simple. It's not a lot to it. And it's actually got a nice strong material to it. So I thought I could see if maybe I can use that decor transfer on the back since it's had some beautiful scroll writing and even some French literature on here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out certain pieces and see if I can make it a little bit cohesive into the back and kind of work with the curvature of the chair and see if I can get this transfer onto the back fabric. As I mentioned, I'm just absolutely thrilled how much I can DIY with one transfer. So I'm going to cut out a few of these elements and as well as some of the scroll and writing so this way I can kind of make it cohesive with the roundness of this chair. And because of the angle I'm going to be working on, and there's also a little bit of a squish, almost a little bit of a cushion to the chair. So I'm going to have to be fairly patient with it, but just like the glass surface that I showed you with the bottles as well as the jean jacket, you're just going to keep rubbing it and you just check your corners. There's a lot of small little pieces to these transfers, especially with the writing. They almost have little separate um, components to it. So just keep rubbing it back, it grabs, and once it's grabbed, you can keep slowly starting to pull it back. The most helpful way with working on the fabric is to almost rub a little bit, pull it back a little bit, keep rubbing it, keep pulling it up. So just slowly, slowly remove the backing of the transfer and don't forget to keep rubbing. Once it grabs, you're good to go, but just be a little bit patient. It does come on very smoothly and it does look beautiful when you're finished. The scrolls on this transfer, as well as the writing, was almost the way it's printed is a little bit separated. So I had to be a little bit more methodical with the rubbing because the parts of the transfer is a little bit separated. So I just went slowly and as I did, I would just double check and then I keep pulling back that transfer back. It also does really help to do small pieces of the transfer, so if you are able to, the other nice part about these transfers is they actually have a grid. So that way, when you're working on curves like this, you can actually use that grid to align because you've also cut it. So this way, you're not gonna be kind of tilted in one way. So it's just gonna help keep things in line so that way everything that you have on the back will have a really cohesive alignment to it. But what a beautiful way to upcycle an old chair or add some new decor to an already existing piece.
Thank you so much for watching this week's video. And please, if you have any questions and or comments, leave me a comment in the comment box below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That's going to tell you when I upload my next video. Until then, take care and I'm really looking forward to seeing you soon. What's up? It's intro outro. What's up? Mm -hmm. You're going to say hello? Are you saying hello? You good boy. What happened to you? What did you do? It has no eyes. You took out its eyes. Breath. Thank you.